Hi, I'm Dieter Sommer from the Definity Foundation. I'm working on the integration of the Internet Computer Blockchain with other blockchains. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the integration of the Internet Computer with the Bitcoin blockchain and particularly the developer preview thereof. Bitcoin is the world's first blockchain and it has become a major store of value. It has a market capitalization of around 700 billion US dollars as of today. Many people consider Bitcoin to be digital gold. Bitcoin, however, does not support smart contracts. And with this integration of the internet computer with Bitcoin, we intend to bring web speed smart contracts to the Bitcoin blockchain. Let's now look at how we are doing this. We take the most general way to bring smart contracts to the Bitcoin blockchain. We enable canisters to directly hold Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network. This allows users to transfer Bitcoin directly to canisters and it allows canisters to transfer Bitcoin to other canisters or to users. And all this happens on the Bitcoin blockchain. So that's extremely powerful because it immediately brings all the capabilities of smart contract canisters to the Bitcoin smart contracts. Let's now have a look at how we are doing this. So we have the internet computer and we have the Bitcoin blockchain. And we do a so-called direct integration, which means we do not have any intermediaries in between, which means we don't need to trust any additional parties or we don't need to rely on any additional parties, which means we don't need any additional trust assumptions and we introduce no additional risks. This is very good in terms of security. So this direct integration has now as a major challenge to allow canisters to hold Bitcoin. For this, we need one important component. It's an implementation of a threshold ECDSA, so a threshold elliptic curve digital signature algorithm. This allows us to have a private key secret shared among the, among the replicas of a large subnet. And it allows canisters to request signatures to be computed by this subnet for the canister. That is, the private key is never restored, but the signatures are computed using cryptographic multi-party computation. This is the only secure way to compute ECDSA signatures on a blockchain, because the private key must not be stored on any single replica, and it's never reconstructed, of course. Now, this uh, component also offers canisters to query their public keys. By the way, canisters can have an infinite number of ECDSA keys using this scheme, because keys are derived on the fly when computing signatures or requesting public keys. Now this public key can be used by the canister to derive a Bitcoin address. And this Bitcoin address can be used by anybody to send Bitcoin transactions to this address, which means this first challenge is resolved. Next, we also need to allow a canister to get aware of incoming Bitcoin transactions. And we need to allow the canister to build its own transactions. For this, we implement another major component. It's a technical integration of Bitcoin functionality into the IC protocol stack. This allows multiple things. So first of all, it allows our replicas of the Bitcoin enabled subnet to connect to nodes of the Bitcoin network. So each replica connects to multiple nodes and then replicas pull in Bitcoin blocks. Those blocks are then processed, they are validated, the transactions and the transaction outputs are extracted. And then we keep track of all the unspent transaction outputs for Bitcoin addresses. And exactly those unspent outputs can then be queried by a canister. And the canister can use those to determine the balance for Bitcoin addresses or to craft its own transactions. So crafting a, crafting a transaction requires to use unspent outputs, use them as inputs for a transaction, create a new output, and then to sign the transaction. And the signing exactly works with the previously mentioned threshold ECDSA scheme that we are implementing. So the canister can request a threshold ECDSA signature or multiple thereof from the threshold ECDSA subnet and then use the signatures to finish the Bitcoin transaction and then make a request to the Bitcoin system API to send the transaction out to the Bitcoin network. And this is done in a very fast way by each replica sending the transaction to every connected node. So it's 
The transaction gets very quickly disseminated throughout the whole Bitcoin network. This concludes the very high-level overview of the integration with the Bitcoin network that we are doing now for the internet computer. Next, let's have a look at the developer preview release. This is part of the current milestone and allows developers already now to write Bitcoin smart contracts against an interface which is close to the final one we will release in the milestone in Q1. However, there are a couple of differences. First of all, we will not connect to real Bitcoin network, but we connect to a locally running node, which runs in regression testing mode. This is the best to do for local development anyway. Next, the replica and the Bitcoin node are running only on the local machine of the developer as part of the DFX environment. So there's nothing running on IC mainnet in the developer preview release. Furthermore, we do not have threshold ECDSA ready. This will be ready for the final release only. Also, we shortcut the integration uh, of the Bitcoin functionality in the IC protocol stack. And finally, what the main point of the developer preview is, is to provide the API that's close to the final one already now to the developer. On the one hand, to enable developers to write contracts against this interface and also to enable them to give us feedback on how to improve the API. Hi, I'm Thomas Locker, researcher at the Affinity working on the Bitcoin integration project. Uh, I'm going to show you a demo of the developer preview. So the goal of the demo is to showcase the main functionality of the Bitcoin developer preview and by extension, the Bitcoin integration project. Uh, the demo will consist of three parts. First, I will show how to uh, get Bitcoin specific information from a canister, such as its Bitcoin address and also its balance. And then I will show how to send Bitcoin to a canister uh, to increase its balance. And finally, I will show how to transfer Bitcoin from a canister out to any address of our choosing. So without further ado, let's jump straight to the demo. On the left hand side, you can see the standard Bitcoin Core software. As you can see, I already set up a wallet for myself and I gave myself some fake Bitcoin. Recall that everything is running locally, so this is not connected to the real Bitcoin mainnet. I further set up an environment variable, which is the address associated with these funds on the left. And we can actually verify that the Bitcoin canister is aware of these funds by querying the Bitcoin canister and get the balance for this address. And as we can see, the numbers match. But we're more interested in interacting with a canister that offers some Bitcoin functionality. And I've also set up a canister to that end called the BTC example Rust canister. And we'll now first use DFX to query its Bitcoin address. There we go. Next, we will also query its balance using the same command and the balance function name. And we see that the canister already has almost three Bitcoin. And now we will give it some more Bitcoin transferred from my wallet over here. So we'll copy the canister's Bitcoin address and let's say We'll send it to Bitcoin. All right, transaction is sent. Now let's again check the balance of the canister. As we can see, the two Bitcoin have arrived and its balance increased to almost five Bitcoin. Now for the final step, we will now send Bitcoin out of the canister, again, using a DFX command. And for the sake of simplicity, we'll simply send one Bitcoin back to my wallet. All right, and if we now look at the uh, Bitcoin Core wallet again, we see that there is one Bitcoin pending. And as soon as the next Bitcoin block is mined, this one Bitcoin will be added again to the available balance. And that concludes the demo. 
I hope it was insightful. The Bitcoin developer preview is available and I encourage everybody to go and check it out.